Okay, heading to the next mile, which is kind of a uh, challenge way to go through a uh, daggum jungle of this. Yeah, here, to, come, come show. I mean, look at that. Poor gentleman, look at that. Looks like he's got leprosy or something, <laughs> man. Bless his heart. I took us in the wrong direction, that's my bad. But uh, we gotta walk down this power line road to get to this next mine site. So, they haven't come up here and cut this in a long time. Normally this is a, a service road, but uh, got about a uh, quarter of a mile to go to get to it. So this will be interesting. This is a, another old slope mine here, right there. So, okay. Okay, we got a little bit more ways to go get there. Uh, Tell you, I'm surprised we haven't seen uh, any deer coming through this brush going for the tree line. You, sometimes we do, but you can tell nobody's been down this service road in a while, which is kind of surprising. But uh, anyway, we're almost there. We see this mine, we got time. We got one more mine to check out. Okay, we have arrived at our location of this old Pratt Consolidated Coal Company slope mine. Uh, I, well, if you don't go, you don't know. You can tell normally water comes out of this slope mine. And uh, at one time, this had a uh, stone oval mine portal entrance. That's where we were hoping that would still be here, but took a little bit to get back in here, but it was worth it. I mean, you just don't know. This mine also dates back to about 1904, 1905. So one thing Mr. Box noticed, it's way out there on the cut in direct line with this could be the hoist house. That would be interesting, so we're gonna go see if we can find that. But anyway, what a shame. But it was okay. Even though I screwed us on the path to get here, uh, at least it was a better walk. So, all right. Hey, well, we don't know what that is, but uh, anyway, this right here, this big cut, this is the rail bed that went to the mine. So we could actually follow the rail bed all the way back to our car. But yeah, I better watch out going down here, man. Can't even see see where you're going. Yeah, part of the perils of uh, hiking out in the woods and going through thick underbrush, man. Let's see. Okay. All right, made it down here. Well, I tell you, this is a perfect deer path. That's what it looks like. But this is the actual rail bed right here. So it would have the terminus of the rail bed, the spur line would have been through those trees. But we could actually follow it all the way back there and it would take us back to our car. So pretty impressive. This rail bed goes back to 1904. So the spur line. So okay, well that's pretty neat. Yeah, they cut they had to do some serious cutting to get get in this. So Sure, sure. Yeah. So the tip of that mine would have been somewhere right in this vicinity. You can see how it's spread out. They would have had uh, two different sightings. So the coal tipple would have been somewhere right in here. So very historic, man. It looks like uh, 
Looks like maybe some hunters use this. And I don't say as I blame them. Perfect area for deer. So. Okay. Well, I may look around here for a few minutes more and then, uh, then we'll start making a way on back and we've got one more mine to check out. It's actually uh, another air shaft mine. <laughs> and uh, we still got some daylight left, why not? Okay, so to see the rail cut goes, the power line goes right over the rail bed cut right here. And so, huh, that's very interesting. It's pretty much wide open. They had to do a lot of cutting to uh, make this uh, rail spur line to reach this mine. Yeah. I'm not sure, I don't think, I think the rail bed has been cut off, but uh, tell you what. Might leave that road. Yeah, we can go, but we can try going back this way. Okay, so this is our last coal mine of the day, and we've got to uh, get across this creek here and head on up to the rail bed into the uh, drift mine. Okay, this is the uh, last one we're gonna check out. This air shaft here. Brought a couple of tools with us today, or Mr. Box did, shovel and a pickaxe. He doesn't even need a rope. There he is. So he's trying to get in that hole directly in, in front of him. There it is, that's the hole he's, he's aiming for. All right. All right, man, he has got his shirt off. He is doing some serious damage. Right there. All right. All right, well, uh, He's about halfway down in there. He's got to dig it out just a little bit more. And if he gets in this one, this is a pretty sizable drift mine right here. So, uh, this is only for ambidextrous people. All right, so he's gonna dig it out just a little bit more. Okay, so uh, Mr. Box, he dug that out. He went in there and it's got a partial collapse and he said it would take a little more digging, but he's in about five, six feet of headroom. Uh, this air shaft connects with this mine over here, which would go back about five, maybe six, 700 feet. But he's, uh, like I said, man, not for the faint of heart very ambidextrous person has to do this so 
But uh, anyway, that was a noble effort to try. But we do have another one in the vicinity. We're going to come back at another time because with the proper repelling equipment and some people in the know um, and go down this other air shaft nearby in the future. So, all right, he's out, folks. All right, with daylight falling. Okay, this is the absolute last air shaft. We decided to go ahead, we're here. Check it out, Mr. Box. He's gonna break out his light. See what it looks like. It's right there. The water? Yeah, I mean, you can see in just a little bit though. Cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. We're hoping the water level may have gone down on this one, but uh, hadn't. But he's he's still down there checking out. We were right in the general area, so why not? So. Can you see anything? Yeah, I'll take a picture for you. All right. And that was it. The water level was gone down a little bit, but uh, not enough to uh, warrant an exploration into the mine. So, all right. Well, that is the last one. So, good field trip today. I don't think we have any daylight left. Nope, that's it. All right.